Could you be able to tell if you or your children have a social media addiction? According to a recent study, 70% of teens and young adults in the U.S. have a social media addiction, and 60% of them spend more than three hours a day online. Now, those same people admit that they get feelings of anxiety and loneliness when they cannot access their accounts. Joining us now to talk more about this is Dr. James Scherer, a psychiatrist who specializes in addiction to technology. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right, first off, why do you think some people have an unhealthy addiction to social media or actually even gaming? You know, it's it's very interesting. It's a great question. In addiction psychiatry, we used to have this concept of the, quote, addictive personality. And it was thought that if you had an addictive personality, you were susceptible to all types of addictions. These days, we don't put that much stock in that idea. Uh, the simple fact is that social media video games are addictive because they are designed to be addictive. If it was up to the developers of these platforms, we would spend more and more time on them every day because the more time we spend, the more advertising revenue they get. Mm. So where does the, the line get drawn between, you know, I like something a lot and I'm addicted to something? Like, like where is that, you know, where is that line? And how, how do we know when we've gone over it? It's a fine line, and sometimes it can be a really nuanced exercise to try to tease out the healthy engagement from the addiction. Uh, there are a couple things that we look for. The number one thing is functional impairment. So if you're no longer able to fulfill your role at school or fulfill your role at work, that's a big problem, right? Um, other things we look for are people disengaging from the other people in their life, you know, families seeing kids less and less, and then when the technology is taken away, people may have emotional withdrawal symptoms. They may be angry, irritable, and they may, you know, do whatever it takes to get that, you know, cell phone, tablet back. Uh, Dr. Shara, it's become second nature for some people. It's just scrolling through social media yeah. or playing video games. It's a way to just, I guess, zone out or escape from their stressors in life. But is that okay? It is more than okay, and you know, a lot of times people assume that because I do a lot of talking and writing about technology addiction that I myself don't like technology. Couldn't be farther from the case. I use social media, I play video games. The fact is that it's not about stopping people from using these things, it's about making sure that they have a healthy relationship with them and they're using them mindfully in a way that makes sense and doesn't interfere with their functioning in other aspects of their life. Do you do anything personally to kind of make sure you stay in check, you know, set an alarm or something? I don't know. Like, do you do anything? You know, for me, I think my wife actually probably keeps me in line. <laughs> but, you know, what, parents can mm -hmm. do. what parents can do is all of these video game systems have parental controls on them, Nintendo Switch, so on and so forth. And there are lots of ways that a parent can uh, take a child's phone and impose some level of restriction. Apple and a lot of the big phone manufacturers do have options like that. So there are concrete things you can do. What you can't do these days is cut the cord because if you take something away, there's always going to be another way that the kid or the or your loved one can access social media or games. But at what point do you know that there's definitely a problem there that needs to be treated? I think that uh, you know that when people stop uh, fulfilling their, their role obligations and when they're using even when they don't want to. Mm. That's one of the biggest problems. You know, Common Sense Media Group quotes that 70% of young people who use social media use it even though they know they're being manipulated and in many cases don't want to be using it as frequently as they are. When that's the case, we really start to think, hey, might there be an addiction here? Is there like a treatment that you can, you know, if somebody has crossed that line that they can use to help themselves get on the get on the safe side again definitely all types of treatments you know the first thing that we usually try is good old-fashioned talk therapy and a lot of times that alone is sufficient however in severe cases especially if there is an underlying mood disorder like major depression or anxiety we will use medications to treat those associated symptoms and illnesses and oftentimes when we do that in conjunction with talk therapy, in conjunction with family therapy, we really can have good results. All right, Dr. Sherrod, thank you so much for being with us. Really good advice and information there. My pleasure, thank you. All right.